All right, if you are watching this video, then you're probably interested in a password manager. I don't know about you, but we've got passwords written down in an old school notebook. We've got them online. We've got a lot of different accounts with, quite frankly, pretty unsecure passwords. So I wanted to explore a password manager. I wanted things to be free and no monthly charges, right? Uh, an easy and convenient way to store passwords and to share them with my wife, for example. And obviously the goal here is to secure all of our accounts from banks, you know, bank access to, you know, whatever. And to have each password be unique and diverse without having to uh, memorize all of these, right? So there's a lot of different companies out there. Um, one of them is 1Password, for example. Uh, but this would, it uh, sounds really good, got a lot of awards uh, and a lot of companies use them, right? But it ultimately ended up in a cost. And I really wasn't interested in if I could avoid it, you know, paying five bucks even a month. Yeah, you know, five bucks, it's it's probably worth it. But is there a different option out there that was less expensive or, or free, right? And so this is what I found. Uh, this company, I think it's an open source um, uh, software that was developed years ago. It got, it has great reviews and uh, it does offer a free version for us, for individuals and, and family. So I investigated this a little bit and uh, I'm gonna walk you through how signing up and adding accounts works and how I can share those uh, with, uh, with somebody like my wife, for example. So you can see here a, two, a free two-person organization. We're not technically an organization, but well, kind of we are, right? Our family, <laughs> um, it is a, a structural organization. So that was the one that I clicked on that I was interested in. And so what we're gonna do is sign up here. Uh, you'll go through the sign up process. It is pretty self-explanatory for the most part. You know, we're gonna start with an email address, your name, and then create something called a master password. You definitely wanna beef this up as as uh, as lengthy as possible. Uh, for the, you can change this at any time. So, you know, when you first sign up, you can create something that's relatively easy um, and easy to memorize, but you'll eventually wanna change this to a super secure password. And I'll show you how to do that using a password uh, random generator that Bitwarden um, offers, and you can certainly use another one and whatnot. But uh, we're going to go ahead and create that. We're going to type that in and click login. Now, will it, it will generally ask you to confirm that you are indeed a human, right? And you just click on the uh, verification uh, instructions like that, and then click uh, log in. Now, it's going to ask you to name your organization. I'm just going to call it family and put in my email address. You would obviously put in yours here and make sure you click that free plan and then we'll click submit. Here is our basic dashboard. It's called the vault. From the next step is to actually add. You can certainly take some time and just click on these different uh, tabs just to explore. For example, here's that random generator, password generator that I was talking about. This is really cool and highly recommended. You can control the character length. Do you want numbers and symbols involved? And there's some subcategories as well. Now, interestingly, on this topic of password generation, I recently came across a news article I think it was CSNBC or CNBC or something like that. And there was a study done from a company that basically said, look, how long does it take, depending on your password length and complexity, for a hacker or a computer of a hacker to penetrate or crack your password? And you can see there, we've got some interesting numbers. You can click pause and take a look at this graph on the screen here, but moral of the story, you want a 13 to 14 length, uh, character length uh, password with as much complexity as possible within reason. This would, in theory, take 2 million years for a computer to be able to, to hack this password. Now we're going to go back to the vault and we're going to add each item. So click add item and you're going to enter the name of your institution or bank or wherever you're trying to access, right? So for example, maybe this is a Wells Fargo account and you'll enter your username and password that you normally use for Wells Fargo. You want to tell Bitwarden what is your username and password. You also want to enter the URL for Wells Fargo. So you'll visit your bank and I'm going to show you an easier way to do this too. You don't have to do this manual. This is a very manual way. There's a much easier way. So hold on, stay with me, but we're going to copy and paste the actual web address for the login in the blank. 
So username, password, and the website address. And voila, there it is right there. You can see it has been entered into our vault. And you can actually add those one by one, right? Here's an easier way. If you click or type in Google, for example, Bitwarden extension, you're gonna add the extension to your Chrome browser. And I think there's probably different extensions for different browsers if you have Firefox, for example, but I use Chrome and this is the one I'm gonna use. So it's really easy, just Google it and then click install. Mine's already installed, so it's giving me the option to remove, but it's super easy. You might have to reset your browser for that to install, but we just click install and boom, it's on there. And in the upper right hand corner, you're gonna notice that a little icon now appears. Can you see it on the top right? It's blue and white. It looks like a shield right there. And that is the Bitwarden extension in your browser. So every time you open up your internet browser now, uh, you're gonna see that little shield. So imagining we're on the Wells Fargo homepage of the bank, we're gonna click that shield and click add login. Again, this is another more simple way to do it. And you'll enter your username that you use for Wells Fargo, for example. And then you can come on over here to the password generator and enter, well, you would enter your regular password, right? If you wanted to change your password for Wells Fargo, you actually have to go inside Wells Fargo as you normally would to change your password. And you can use your password generator to create a more unique and secure password. So that is how you do it using the extension. You can just see, click that little shield, insert the username, password, and then click save. And then from here on out, every time you visit this particular website, you're gonna click the blue shield, tap your login information, and your username and password automatically populate. So you don't have to memorize any of that. So back to our vault here within Bitwarden, we're gonna actually add a family member now. Remember, I, one of the goals here was to share it easily with somebody without having to write it down on a piece of paper. So I'm gonna add uh, my favorite person, my wife. I'm gonna enter her email address here and then I can give her account privileges. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna make her an equal, a co-owner, which is the uh, highest administrative uh, level where she could add change and make changes however she might want to. So if she has passwords that she wants to add or if she wants to update a password using her email address or her account, then that um, is perfectly doable, right? Now, she certainly could develop her own account and add all of the same information of, you know, bank accounts and, and all that good stuff. Uh, but that's really duplicating the process here. You only need to do it once and then you share your account with this other person and then they have access to it. If you're not comfortable giving that person, you know, a full ownership, there are other uh, user types that you can assign to that person. Click send and then that person will receive an invitation. They will have to click uh, yes, I want to join, and they'll have to actually create their own account, um, but that doesn't mean they're going to be using their account. They just need to create an account. Now, let me show you what this looks like on the mobile device side of things, because that's a big question, right? Great on the computer, fine, I understand that now, but how do I use Bitwarden with my uh, phone? So you download the app. You can see it got great reviews. I don't mess around with anything that has substandard reviews, right? And... We're gonna download that and install it onto our device. You can certainly look around and read it, you know, get comfortable with, you know, what it's gonna look like and the de definition and description and all that good stuff. Once it's uh, available to open, we can click open and we are going to log in now using the same uh, email address and remember that master password that we created earlier. The first time you do this, you might want to create something that's, you know, relatively easy for you to remember. Otherwise, you're going to be copying and pasting and it's going to give you a bit of a headache. And then you can certainly change this a little later on to a more secure password. So they do give you some suggestions. They want you to make it memorable, right, and strong and all that good stuff. You can set up a password, a master password hint if you are interested. So that might be useful for you, but uh, I figured out, hey, I want this one to be the most complicated, right? Because <laughs> if somebody gains access to this, then they really have access to all my other passwords, right? Which kind of defeats the purpose of a password manager. So you'll want to be strategic and smart about this. And yeah, that might come with a headache or two because you have to copy and paste something. But um, again, that would be my advice. So we're going to log in on our phone, username, master password, 
and you're just gonna click yes, yes, yes. Don't click no, no, no. Once we are logged in, we can see we have 16 accounts that have been populated. We're not done yet, okay? Uh, we do have access in within the app to that random password generator, which is nice, because you might be adding accounts from your phone, and you might wanna quickly generate a random password and copy it with the one click feature. So I really liked this, uh, and you can cycle through if you're not happy, if it's got a weird you know, symbol. Um, and that would be another advice piece of advice. Don't, don't use a password that has a really weird like caret symbol. Um, you can't type that very easily. Okay, uh, so again, we can add individual items, uh, bank, you know, account, institution names, uh, just kind of like we did before. You just enter the name, enter your username, and the uh, password that you use that's associated with that account. By the way, don't use password as the password. <laughs> Believe it or not, people do that. Again, if you want to change the password for your uh, bank account, you'll have to go into your bank account and click you know, profile and change the password there. And then you can come back and update that within your app. Okay, so 17 different accounts you can see here. Now we're gonna go into our settings on our phone. This is an iPhone. We're gonna click the passwords. So settings and then scroll down to passwords and we wanna click autofill passwords. Can you see that? And make sure that Bitwarden button is checked. They're gonna have you enter that master password again. And once your setting is changed, you're gonna go to your bank account and you will see an option to enter your new password under. You click the little key button and then click your bank name and it will auto-populate your username and your password, voila. By the way, click that like button, subscribe to the channel and share this video if you think somebody might benefit. Let's head back now to the actual vault on our computer. We're gonna add our significant other or the second person to the vault because on their account, they won't be able to see anything until you add them. So you're gonna click all of your accounts. This should be a select all button and then click move selected to the organization. Make sure family is checked and then click default collection. Now when you log in to your family member, when your family member or second person logs into their account, uh, their Bitwarden account, so let's go ahead and open the extension on their computer. They can log in with their, their email address, not yours, right? Their own email address, and they will suddenly see that they have access to all of your accounts. And that is how we are using our password manager. Hopefully this has helped you out. Thanks.